I, I have to say, though, that I think uh, you know, compare the two that Watergate pales uh, really, uh, in my view, uh, as, as compared to what we're, uh, we're confronting now. James Clapper, former director of national intelligence under President Barack Obama. Now, that was a comment he made to the Australian Press Club months ago. It had to do with comparing Watergate with, well, what he believed to be potential Russian collusion with the Trump campaign in the 2016 presidential election. Um, we still don't have any evidence of that. But what we have learned over the last several days, I think, well, I think James Clapper is right. It does make Watergate look pale in comparison. I think we've learned through the gospel, according to the New York Times of all places, that President Barack Obama, through a counterintelligence investigation conducted by the FBI, spied on the Trump campaign, period, end of story, with electronic surveillance, with a, a plant and an informant. Uh, yeah, that's worse than Watergate. So on that one, I'll give James Clapper something. Dr. Sebastian Gorka joins us now, Fox News national security strategist, New York Times bestselling author, Defeating Jihad. Uh, good afternoon, Dr. Gorka. Good to talk to you, sir. Greetings, Larry. Thanks for having me. Is it is it fair to make a comparison to Watergate in that, well, I'll ask you this. What do you think President Obama knew and when did he know it? There is absolutely no way on God's green earth that the FBI and the DOJ deployed intelligence assets into the Trump campaign, undercover assets, without the White House giving them the green light, Larry. And we also know that James Comey, then director of the FBI, who approved this counterintelligence investigation on the Trump campaign, did so with evidence, so-called evidence, presented by CIA Director John Brennan. So that brings the CIA into the mix. And, of course, that man, James Clapper, the director of national intelligence, had to know this as well. It was his job to know what the CIA and FBI are doing. Am I wrong there? Well, well, well not only that, but this is the same Clapper who told Comey to brief the steel dossier of Russian propaganda materials to the, uh, the, the, pre the, uh, the president-to-be, so that afterwards the, the fact of that briefing could be leaked to the CNN, to Jake Tapper, and then Clapper can get a juicy contract a few months later. With CNN, yeah. So uh, I hear, I, I've been presenting these facts. I've seen you present these facts in various forum at well, as well. Um, one of the big arguments that gets pushed back to me, I would love for you to address it, is, is mm -hmm. this. Listen, this makes no sense. If they were trying to defeat Trump with uh, this counterintelligence thing, why would they keep it secret? Yet they actually damaged Hillary Clinton by being so public with the criminal investigation into her email account. Uh, is, is that an appropriate challenge or are they missing the point that this wasn't to defeat Trump? They did this because they figured they were going to beat Trump. There was something else at play. Every, every single one of those individuals, it's clear from their actions that are now being unveiled, thought that Hillary was going to win. That's why James Comey gives a 14-minute minute press conference in which for 13 minutes he says this is a slam dunk she's committed felonies and then he exonerates her in the last minute none of this none of this would have occurred if she had actually won we wouldn't know any of this so right. they were in the tank and now they they're desperately trying to hide what they did to undermine the trump campaign that's the motivation and just one comparison that is i think so telling in the Servergate investigation of Hillary Clinton, they gave out immunity like candy. Nobody was charged and immunities were given out left, right and center. In this case, in the so-called Russia collusion, zero immunities are offered and people are charged with uh, with with offenses that have nothing to do with the original mandate. Well, and, and many of those offenses seem to be crumbling. Let's start with uh, Lieutenant General Mike Flynn, the former National yes. Security Advisor, when you were at the White House as well. Uh, that, what's happening with that? He pled guilty to uh, giving false information to an FBI agent, and the sentencing, we're into five, six months now, and there's still no sentencing. Yeah, I, I think Mueller has showed his hand here. He's in trouble. He realizes that that this attempt to create a larger net by coming after General Flynn with a process crime is falling apart. And, and the, the, the conflict of interest, when you look at Mueller himself, are just 
every day, Larry, every, is there a day where we're not getting more information about how this is just the reverse of what they said it would be? Right. No, I know. It is It is pretty remarkable that all of the revelations really are showing uh, an incredibly terrifying conspiracy at the hands of the Obama administration, and there's still nothing against President Trump. Let, let's just put it in perspective. What was Watergate? Watergate brought a president down because of a cack handed bungled burglary of a Democrat Party office, after which they tried to cover up the, the burglary. That's, what, that's all that Watergate was. Now we have the whole apparatus of the federal law enforcement capacity and the intelligence community deployed against somebody for political purposes because they're running a presidential candidate against your friend Hillary. Yeah. Watergate will, will be utterly forgotten in five years' time, and this will become the largest political scandal since 1776. So as a... As a um I guess as, a, as an explanation as to what was really at play here with this counterintelligence investigation, assuming, uh, as you so aptly said there, that James Comey, James Clapper, Barack Obama, Loretta Lynch, all of these players all took it for granted that Hillary Clinton was going to win this election, um, then, then is, it, is this the quintessential uh, insurance policy that Peter right. Strzok was talking about? Basically, this whole exercise was the insurance policy just in case it wasn't to keep trump from winning it was to take care of him if he did win yeah you put yourself in that position you just have to put yourself in the position of a very highly um high-ranking political appointee of the obama administration they live in the bubble where all they read is the new york times and the washington post which is telling them hillary has a 95 percent chance of winning so they're golden however they see the fact that candidate Trump is having uh, five events in three states in one day, and Hillary is collapsing on 9-11. So they're, 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 they're worried. They need to have a backup. And that's why they did a CI probe. It's so telling. If, they really, if there really was a crime occurring inside the Trump campaign, that would have been a criminal investigation. It would have been part of the corruption squad at the FBI. But no, it was a CI investigation because there was no crime they could actually point to. And it tells you that clearly was their backup insurance right. plan. But they could abuse the uh, the structure of a counterintelligence investigation to hopefully, possibly, as Andrew McCarthy wrote earlier this week, maybe find a crime. Yes. But again, that's a, that's an abuse of that system. Our guest is Dr. Sebastian Gorka, Fox News National Security Strategist. And by the way, just to sort of walk down that path a little longer, uh, let's say they do this investigation, which we now know they did, a spying investigation on the Trump campaign, and uh, Hillary Clinton does win. Well, if you're James Comey, and it's the first day of school with your new president. And and let's face it, it was a rough campaign. Donald Trump said some very negative things against the new president, Hillary Clinton. You get to walk into the new madam president and say, hey, by the way, look what we've been doing for the last several months. I mean, you're you oh. you're golden with the new president at that point you, because you've done you this. get you get a golden star in your exercise book. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So where does this what what happens now? Because I, I think that so much has been revealed this week that I think the American people and I think even some people in the mainstream media, if you look at the way they're covering this, they're also they're finally starting to say, oh, OK, maybe this maybe this thing really is not the Russian collusion story that we were expecting. And maybe it's not even the obstruction of justice. Do you see this thing starting to turn now for the president? Do you see an end game in sight? I do. I, I for two reasons. I think number one, the the IG's report, it, it will be nigh impossible to redact that. There, there's no way that the Attorney General can allow the DOJ or the FBI to redact out that which is embarrassing, which is clearly what they've been trying to do under Rod Rosenstein for the last year with with numerous memos and documents that they've tried to to to, to snuff out. Um, and it is clear that in his investigations, the IG has talked to a lot of agents, a lot of analysts. These names will be released, and now we're going to have the witnesses to the corruption multiply numbers. Uh, secondly, uh, the Attorney General will have to take action. There, there is, you know, there is a point in time where 
the American people will demand that these crimes are investigated, especially in a midterm year. So those two things alone, I think, mean the whole Mueller investigation collapses and a new investigation with clean hands will be begun on the highest levels of the FBI, DOJ and the CIA to uh, charge people for the felonies they committed in the name of Hillary Clinton and the DNC. Sebastian Gorka, I want to bring you back to your friend James Clapper here. Uh, last night on Don Lemon's program, he I think he's co-hosting that show now with Don Lemon. Oh, no, no, no. That's Avenatti that's doing that. Uh, He he was asked about this. He said, listen, uh, uh, Mr. Clapper, it sure looks like the FBI under Barack Obama was spying on the Trump campaign, even so far as having an informant or a mole or something. Here's what Clapper said about that. Well, I think it's this is a uh, hyperbole. Hyperbole. Uh, they may have had someone uh, uh, who was talking to them uh, in uh, uh, in the campaign, but you know the focus here, and as it was with the intelligence community, is not on the campaign per se, but what the Russians were doing to try to to instantiate themselves in the campaign or to influence or leverage it. So, if there was someone that was observing that sort of thing. Uh, well, that's a good thing uh, because the, the Russians pose a threat to the to our the very basis of our political system. Uh, so, so I guess what he's saying is, oh no, no, no! Listen, they weren't spying on the Trump campaign; they were spying on the Russians who were talking to the uh, Trump campaign. And by the way, it's a good thing they did. They they it's a, it's a, it's a, they were doing their duty. How do you respond to that? Uh, Larry, you need to know who these personalities really are, and this is why they're in big trouble. So. Uh, James Comey is clearly a narcissist with a martyr complex. Uh, John Brennan voted for Gus Hall in 1976, so he was a communist at the height of the Cold War. Not a smart guy who should be tweeting less and finding a good lawyer for himself. And, and Clapper is, is, is the, 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 the bluntest of the, of the, the lot. When he was at DIA in the early 1990s, and this is now out there, this individual gave... After the fall of the Soviet Union, he gave the Residentura, the head of the KGB section here in D.C., a pink Pentagon all-access pass. <laughs> you, want, you want to talk about Russian collusion? <laughs> he issued that until the SIS, the Senior Intelligence Service, said, excuse me, he's an intelligence collector. You can't give him a pink badge to the Pentagon, and they recalled it. And this is the same man who said the Muslim Brotherhood is a secular organization, Larry. So, uh, in other words, we, should, we shouldn't really pay attention to anything James Clapper says. No, we, we, we should pay a lot of attention because these people uh, are going to talk far too much for their own good, and it's going to get very, very interesting very far. Yeah. Um, uh, meanwhile, w- listen, you were involved with the Trump campaign at the time. Obviously, you were an advisor and you did some appearances with the president, and then you were a part of the, of the transition team and, and the new White House. Um, well, I'd like to ask you personally, knowing now that there could have been an informant in your mix, you may have been interacting with somebody, and there may have been surveillance. We know now at least four people were electronically surveilled. What is your personal reaction to this, not as an observer or a pundit, but just as a human being, knowing that your government was doing this to you? Uh, my parents escaped communism to get away from this kind of behavior. So, you know, when Leventa Beria, the, the founder of the, the, the proto-KGB, says, show me the man and I'll show you the crime, that's the Soviet Union, that's not America. Uh, it, we, we have to get to the bottom of this, Larry, for the sake of our republic and find out once more whether Lady Justice is blindfolded. It is that important. Is, is the fact that your, your name is Clinton means you get protected by the establishment when you commit a crime? And the fact that your name is Trump means they're going to fabricate crimes against you. We cannot let that stand. I was speaking with somebody, a uh, former Justice Department person who's been focusing on this story quite a bit uh, off the record the other day. Uh, so I won't give this person's name. But I said, you know, wh- what's the end game here? And this person just looked at me straight in the eye and said, people are going to jail. There's no other way this can end. People are going to jail. Do you, do you think, do you agree? Completely. 
Completely. I, you know, I have this discussion with people about the political culture in America will never allow a first lady or a cabinet member to be you know, put in a federal dock. Right. I don't know. I wasn't born here. I chose this country. I, I hope that you know, justice is blind. But at the end of the day, based upon just what Andy McCabe did and what the IG is already you know, coming out of, leaking out of his report, high-ranking DOJ, FBI officials and others will be charged and the evidence is there for them to be, to be actually convicted. We shall keep the faith, Dr. Sebastian Gorka, but it's always <laughs> good to end our week with a uh, scintillating conversation with you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Larry, and congratulations on on having the most important uh, afternoon radio show in America. Oh, my goodness. Thank you for that. I'll take, I'll take that. Can we save that? Can that be my ringtone? I'm going to have to replace it. Right now, my ringtone is, greetings, Larry. So,